What is up, Summer Excitement community and world at large? My name is Clay Johnson, coming to you from Savannah, Georgia. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a minister out here working uh, with the group called the Oak Grove Church of Christ in Rinkin, Georgia. Um, but I grew up in Louisiana, did some uh, work with some churches in Louisiana and Arkansas and Texas, and uh, I've been part of the Summer Excitement community since my youth. And I'm so grateful um, for Summer Excitement, for um, what I've learned and how I've grown and matured. And um, I've just seen so many lives changed through Summer Excitement. And I know if, if you want to find out more, you can check them out online if you don't know what Summer Excitement is. If you are part of this Summer Excitement uh, group, then, um, then welcome. Uh, I'm excited about this new season that we're in. I know it's kind of weird. There's a lot of kind of funky things going on. Everything's a little bit... Um, uh, abnormal, obviously. Um, but this is really cool. We get to get online. We get to kind of talk about the, the, the things that we love about summer excitement, talk about our faith and how we can kind of encourage each other and challenge each other during this challenging time. So um, I'm, I'm thankful for, um, for Kyle and for Doyle and for everybody kind of getting, getting behind this and, and getting this started. So anyway, I'm talking to you today about um, kind of some of the false narratives that we have about the community of believers, whether you're talking about your local church or the, the, the church as a whole or even summer excitement, um, that, that can kind of fall in the same category. Um, because I think there's a, there's a false narrative that exists where we believe that the community is there. And of course, we would never say this out loud, but we kind of feel it sometimes, that the community is there to serve us. That the church is there to serve us. That summer excitement is there to serve us. So to get this out of the way, I'm going to give you some, some wrong ways to look at these communities of faith. And they're like this. Here's what the church is not. Here's what summer excitement is not. It is not a gas station. <laughs> it's not a place where you kind of go to get your tank refilled because it's empty and, and you just kind of limp along until you can get there. It's not a place where you get your batteries recharged, your spiritual batteries. I'm, I'm feeling down. I'm feeling low. I got to get back to the church and get back to the community. I just kind of I, I get there and, and I get filled up to the top and then I kind of go through life and it gets down and worse and worse and and. And finally, I'm just kind of rolling along at a, at a crawl until I can get back and get recharged again in my spirit and then use more of my spiritual energy. And that's not what it is, all right? Neither is it a movie theater. And I, I mean, well, obviously, but it's, it's not a place where we go to be um, entertained. And I, and I mean in a sense of um, forget about the troubles of my life, forget about all the worries, forget about the problems at school, the problems at home, whatever. I need to go to a place where I can just kind of close my eyes, be in a dark room and just worship, just just forget everything else and, and, and hear something inspirational, hear something that will make me forget everything else and, and be entertained with great music and smoke and lights and fun and 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 that's not what it is either. And it's not a drugstore. It's not a Walgreens or a CVS or any other apothecary. That's not what um, the community of faith is. I, I, I got to go to to um, to get something to help me cope. Right? Give me a word. Give me uh, give me a scripture. Give me some sort of medication, spiritual medication, so I can deal with uh, this sickness. The, the sickness that's going on in, in, in my life. This this you know my parents are having issues and I'm having issues or, or there's stuff going on. I mean just. It's not a place where you get some sort of spiritual drug to, um, to help you through life. And it's not a shopping mall, right? It's not a place where you go and like, I like this person, I like this thing. I'm going to take a little of this, take a little of this and that and, and, and make my life better because I can just kind of add all these things to it. And neither is it kind of a professional development program or a or degree program that you can kind of check off these boxes and add these things to your resume and and show them around. Hey, look, I've been here. I've done all these things. I've, I'm a better person in my faith because I've attended summer excitement or because I go to church every week or because I'm a member of this community of faith. Like you can't show this thing to God and say, God, you, you, you know, you need to pay attention to me because I'm I'm growing and I'm maturing in, in my faith. That's, that's not what the community of faith is all about either. All of these are really self-focused ideas, right? Things that you say, well, I'm going to go there because the church can serve me in this way, or summer excitement can serve me in this way, or my community of faith can can help me out in in this situation. All those are wrong. All those are lies. 
all those are, and of course the, the church doesn't help. We kind of we kind of uh, make our own mistakes in, in trying to um, you know advocate for more people to attend church, more people to attend summer excitement, all that kind of stuff, and it can sometimes wrongly be assumed that 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 we think that these things are true, but they are not. It's not a fill me up, entertain me, take away my pain, serve me, consumerism mentality, right? This is. This is exactly the opposite, right? Christ called us to be exactly the opposite of that. The community is not here to serve you. Rather, you are part of the community in order to serve. And Jesus said the same thing. In, in Mark, the 10th chapter, there's a great story of, um, of James and John, right? The sons of a dude named Zebedee. Um, in fact, um, it wasn't even Zebedee that got involved. It was their mama that went to Jesus and said, Hey, Jesus, um, could you see to it that my two boys um, are kind of the, the, the top two brass in your new administration whenever you take over? Can they, be, can they sit at your right hand and your left hand? Right? Can they be better than these, these other 10 uh, goobers? Because they're smarter, they're stronger, they, they can handle these tasks better than those. So she's trying to, she goes to Jesus trying to kind of weasel her way in and get their boys kind of these positions of authority. And the other 10 find out about it, and they are really ticked off, right? And here's what it says in Mark 10, uh, verse um, 41. When the 10 heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. And Jesus called them together indignant. They were really, that, and that's a serious word. They were P-O'd. Uh, you know that those who are regarded, Jesus says this, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So there's Jesus' uh, command there. Like, he, if we are to be um, Christ, if we are to be his body, if we are to be members of this community, then that means we are uh, called to reflect the nature of God through Jesus Christ. And here's what Jesus says. Look, I, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. Therefore, you should serve one another, right? And, and on Jesus' last night, when he had the, the last supper with his um, apostles in that upper room, it was Jesus. He's the one who took off his clothes and wrapped a towel around his waist and began to wash his disciples' feet. And he said, look, I'm setting an example for you, that you do to each other what I'm doing for you. I'm your master. I'm your Lord, and I'm serving you. Therefore, you should have no problem serving each other. That's how community is made. That's how um, that's how we we come together. That's how unity comes about. Is when people lay aside their own wants and their own self interests and they serve each other. That's how a strong community is formed, right? And even if Ephesians tells us the nature of what this community is, right? If you read the book of Ephesians, you'll see that we are um, this body of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. We're called together to, to continue on what Jesus did, right? So we're not going to something in order to be served, but rather we are a part of the body of Christ, that we can be of service to each other and to the world, to show the world who Jesus is. And that is... That's powerful. Jesus said, look, if you want to be great, here's what you should... And he, in fact, it's interesting. Jesus doesn't say, hey, don't, don't strive for greatness. No. He wants us to try our best. He wants us to, to, to try to, 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 be, uh, to be the best that we can possibly be, right? But, he, but we have to understand what greatness is. It's not the way the world sees, great, sees greatness. It's not in how much money you make, what kind of house you live in, how many degrees you have, where you live, what your zip code is, all this kind of stuff, that, what, what you drive. That's not what greatness is. Not how many people who work for you, um, how, how far you travel, what your Instagram feed looks like, what your uh, Snapchat is like, how many friends you... That has nothing to do with greatness. In fact, it's just the opposite. Jesus says, to be great, you humble yourself. You wash one another's feet. That's what greatness. Look, you want to be first? That's awesome. Here's how you be first. You become a slave. You become the last and the least of everyone. And you put everyone else ahead of yourself. That's how to be great. Well, 
Okay, so what about this difficult time we live in now? How do we serve one another when we can't even get out of our houses, right? We can't even go to our communities of faith. We can't even worship with the church, right? Because we're confined into our homes. We have this quarantine business going on. So how do we handle that? How do we deal with service and serving others and being the body of Christ in this in this difficult time? Think about that, right? How, how can you serve how can you have less selfishness, more service in this weird COVID-19 world that we live in? Well, first of all, I think it's good to understand a big problem in all this and one of the hindrances in all this, and that is this great, massive fear that has gripped a lot of people. I mean, people who are absolutely afraid of of everything of just constantly seeing the news, constantly reading their, their their news feed on their phone, seeing all these bad things that are going on and fear just is gripping their hearts. I'm, I want to encourage you to not let fear have control over you, right? Um, because that's not what what we've been given, right? God did not give us a spirit of fear, as the scripture says, but a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. So how how do we navigate in this, in this realm of fear that we're in, the answer, I believe, is, is to seek the opposite of fear. Seek the powerful antidote to fear. And do you know what that is? It's not what you think. <laughs> the powerful antidote to fear. How do we fight fear? How do we to live against fear? Here it is in 1 John, the fourth chapter. I'm sorry. I, if I touch my face, please forgive me. I'm, I'm trying real hard. 44 years in, now I can't touch my face anymore. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse 18. Here's what John says, right? There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out or casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. So how do we get rid of fear? How do we drive out fear? How do we cast out fear? How do we do the exact opposite of fear? Is we love. And, and here's why. See, fear is absolutely self-focused. It's all about self-preservation. It's all about fight or flight. It's about I've, I've got to do what's right so I can protect myself, make sure I'm safe, make sure my family's safe, make sure everybody's good. This is what this is what is gripping a lot of people right now, is this whole spirit of fear. And the only way to get rid of fear is not to focus on yourself, to focus on everybody else, to, to, to love others. Because love has nothing to do with self. Love has everything to do with everybody else. That's why it's the exact equal opposite. Fear looks in a mirror, and love looks outward to see how we can serve, how we can love. And perfect love casts out fear. Jesus showed us what perfect love is, right? It's that love that led him to the cross to pour out, pour out his life for me and for you, that we might be saved through him, right? Now, what, what motivates you during this season, right? Are you motivated by fear or motiva motivated by love? And you can, do, you can have the same behavior and be motivated by something else. You can be quarantined in your house out of fear of, of getting sick. Or you can be quarantined in your house. You can self-quarantine out of love for those who you know and, and who you care about that, that you want them to be um, the, as safe as possible. Right? It just matters what, what your heart is, what your motivation is. You can go out into the, into the world. You can go out into the community right now out of fear. I've got to get out. I've got to get out and get, a, get work, get a job. got to make money. got to do this. got to do that. I can't. I'm, I don't care what the government says. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to go out and take care of this because um, I'm, I, I want to. I need to. I have to. That's fear-based because you're just concerned about yourself, which by the way, I fall into that category. I have been guilty of this during this season of like, I don't care about getting sick. I got to go make some money. Right? Fear motivated. Fear based. That's my confession. Or you can be totally motivated by love to say, look, I, I, these people have a need and I, I can meet that need. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm good. I'm, I'm well. I can go out and meet that need and, and be motivated out of love. So 
it's more of a question of, of what's motivating you in, in this season, right? Are you motivated by fear, a self-focused mentality, or by love, an others-focused mentality? I want you to think about that, and, and you can write some comments here if, if you want to. Why, why is, are some other reasons that this time is so difficult and so challenging when it comes to service, when it comes to being the community of faith? Um, you know, and, and how can we show this service mindset? Um, you may have some great ideas uh, that I'd love for, and I know you have some great ideas, I'd love for you to share in, in the comments below of some ways we can show service to others even in this difficult time um, because I tell you what if your whole idea of community and of and of uh, church is getting together and doing churchy stuff then then church is ruined for you right? <laughs> because because we can't do that right now um, that's when you that's when you have to think bigger that's when you have to realize that the, that man the church is so much more than just what we do one hour a week the church is the being the body of Christ on a daily basis. How do we do that? I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to I'd love to read your suggestions and some ideas that you have of how we can encourage each other to serve one another during this difficult time. I want you to think about these six invitations as well. My hands. So here's here's what we can do, right? During this time, plug in with God each day, right? Number one, pray, read your scripture. Those other spiritual exercises, uh, meditation, all those things. Um, just be sure you're staying connected to God. Number two, stay connected to each other. We have to do that. And and by the grace of God, we have Facebook. We have uh, social media. We have phones we can text and we can FaceTime. Stay connected, right? Um, uh, number three, don't ask about or be so concerned about what your spiritual giftedness is, but ask yourself how... You are a gift to the community and how you can offer whatever you have to the community of faith. Um, number four, this may be a little difficult right now, but um, eventually develop a friendship with someone different than you. Uh, someone who looks different, different race, different religion, different, different class of folks, different parts of town, whatever. Kind of spread out your arms, enlarge your territory, as it were, of of people that you associate with and people that you are um, communicating regularly with. Develop this servant mentality, right? Where, you not, where you're looking down on people, whether you're looking up at everyone from the lowest standpoint. So you can, you can serve others in that way. And lastly, uh, develop a healthy rhythm. We got to have rhythm during this time, folks. We're stuck in houses. Um, so um, that's gonna, it's gonna look differently for everyone, but it's important to schedule out your time, to schedule out your day, how you're going to be um, kind of operating during during this this season. Um, my name is Clay Johnson. I am so happy to be here with you. Um, if you want to see me other times, I am also called the Parking Lot Pastor uh, on my Facebook uh, feed. I go live every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Uh, I teach more there, and I would love for you to kind of check that out as well. But hey, um, I've been honored to talk to you today. Be blessed. Be well. Um, be safe, wash your hands, don't touch your face, <laughs> stay six feet apart. Uh, God bless you. Love y'all. Mean it. Bye.